Hi guys, good morning. Um, this is our reading lesson for the 15th and we are gonna continue talking about nonfiction. And today we're specifically talking about nonfiction text features. So I want you to think to yourself, we've mentioned some of this earlier this year, but what is a text feature? Think to yourself for just a moment. All right, you might have heard the word feature used before when talking about videos or movies or when we're talking about um, music, um, but features is something specific or something important. Um, and a feature in a nonfiction text is important clues in the text that help you understand the topic better. There are lots of different types of nonfiction text features, and today we're gonna go over a few of the main ones that you need to know about. I guarantee when we start talking about them, you're going to say, oh yeah, I know what that is, or you might've noticed it in a book that you've read before. But as long as we continue with this unit, we're going to be looking at these text features in every book that we read. You'll notice that every nonfiction text or every nonfiction book has at least some of these features. It might not have all of them, but it will at least have some of them. That's what nonfiction is all about. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And we're gonna start with our presentation today. Now our presentation is really neat because it actually shows us what these text features would look like if you were to see them in print. So we're gonna to start today. Um, what are text features? We kind of touched on that. Authors include text features to help you, the reader, better understand what you're reading. It kind of like clues that help you to understand the topic better. I like to use those text features because it gives you a better picture of what's going on in the story rather than just reading the information in the basic text outline. Um, these text features provide information that might not be written in the text. It might be something special that you need to read to help you understand the story better. They can be found in any type of nonfiction text. The first type that we're going to talk about today is a diagram. I know you have seen these before. I have lots of nonfiction books in my classroom that have these diagrams in them. And the story we're going to read today has a diagram on almost all of the pages, which is really neat. So diagrams are just drawn pictures that help to show or explain something. So the one in front of you, it actually shows a volcano diagram. So it shows all of the parts of a volcano to help you better understand how a volcano works. So there can be a diagram about the parts of an alligator. There could be a diagram about how to bake a cake. There could be a diagram about how to put a table together. Diagrams can be about anything, but it tells you how to do something or it shows you something that needs to be explained. All right, we'll move on to the next one. The next one is a subheading, or we might call it a subtitle. Every page or every story that you read has a title to it. So for example, you might be reading a book about ants, and the title of the story might be Marching Ants. Within the story, you're going to typically have different subtitles or different subheadings. Those are smaller titles or smaller headings about the same topic that the book is about. So for example, if you're reading a book about ants, your subtitles or subheadings might be helpful ants or types of ants or food that ants eat or where do ants live. All of these are just little titles that go under the big title to help support the main idea or the big title. Okay, the next one is different types of text. So in your story um, that you've read in school or the nonfiction books that you've read in school, you have definitely seen bold words. We've done those together. Bold words or maybe an italic word, which means it's a word that's kind of slanted or words that are in color like red, typically you might see in a book. Those are all styles of text or styles of words that help show, hey, they're important. The author is telling you this word right here, I'm making it stand out because it's important to you. And so when you're reading a story and you see a text or a word that's bold, which means it's darker, or italics, which means it's slanted or it's colored, hmm, that's probably gonna tell you that that's an important word. It's something the author wants you to remember. 
Okay. The next thing we want to talk about is photographs or illustrations. In our book today, we have some amazing illustrations done by Gail Gibbons, and we don't have any photographs in this book. But in most of the nonfiction books you read, you will see photographs. I know we have a sharks book in our classroom, and there are some amazing action shots of sharks, especially great white sharks breaching the water and eating. Or you might have pictures of, um, we have a lot of books about snakes in our classroom. So photos of snakes in the wild. Um, we have a book about dolphins in our classroom and we have photos of dolphins jumping out of the waves. But those photos help give you a visual or information that you can see with your eyes to help you better understand the topic. They're really important. Imagine reading a nonfiction book with no pictures at all. Oh my gosh, I feel like we would get so bored after just a few minutes of reading it. So it's really nice that we have these visual aids or these pictures that help us better understand it. All right, the next thing is an index. You all are familiar with this. It typically is in the back of a book. You can flip to the back of the book and you can look through the index to help you find information in a story. So let's say that I'm reading a book and you know what, I've searched through the whole book and I cannot find information about animal food. Let's look in the index and scroll down and look and oh, wait a second, I see that animal food is mentioned on page two. So I can flip right back to page two, there's my information about animal food. Index just helps you find things in your nonfiction books. It helps make it a little easier on you. All right. The next thing is a map. You might have a map in a story that you read. That map could be um, a map of a neighborhood um, that you're studying in the book. It could be a map of a home. It could be a map of a community. It doesn't have to be a map of the United States. It could be any type of map. It could be a map of a school. Um, but maps typically help you to show you where historical things happened, like maybe battles or wars. It helps you to show where political lines are. They're very helpful in lots of different ways, but maps are another thing you might see as a nonfiction text feature. All right, the next one is a table of contents, and that's in the front of the book, and that just tells you the chapters and the pages and the subtitles in a story. It's another way to find out information in your nonfiction text. And the very last one we're going to talk about is the glossary. Now, the glossary is kind of like a miniature dictionary. It's in the back of your book, and it's where you can find all of the words that are bold or italics or colored in the story and their definitions. So if you don't know a word, you don't understand a word, check the glossary, and you might find that word in the glossary to help you better understand it. I know that's a lot. I know it's a ton of stuff that we just went over, but we're gonna be looking at these and examples of these in every story that we read throughout the next few weeks in our nonfiction unit. So today, we are going to be reading a story called Tell Me Tree, and it is by Gail Gibbons. Now, you might have read stories by Gail Gibbons before, but Gail Gibbons is a very famous children's author, and she actually, we have an entire writing unit on her that we're going to do if we go back to school. She's awesome, but she writes nonfiction books for students that are really interesting, and she draws absolutely amazing illustrations. So I'm excited to share this book with you today. It's called Tell Me Tree, and it says all about trees for kids. Now, before we start this book, I do want to recognize this is a reference nonfiction text, meaning that it tells us about a topic and gives us information about that topic specifically. I bet you can take a guess, what is the topic about? You got it, it's trees. So this entire book is giving us reference information about trees. It's not a biography, it doesn't tell about the life of a person. It's not literary nonfiction because it doesn't tell a story. Instead, it tells facts and information about trees. So let's go ahead and get started. As I read today, I wanna to make sure that you are noticing any of the nonfiction features that we've talked about so far. And I'll be pointing some out too. All right, let me turn my computer a bit. Awesome. Tell me tree, trees. So I noticed that we already have a subtitle right here and the subtitle is trees. 
All right, it's a smaller title that goes under the main title and it helps to tell what we're talking about on this, on this page. Trees are woody plants. Their trunks, limbs, and branches are their stems. So I also notice, guys, this is a diagram right here. The diagram points out all of the parts of a tree. So we have a subtitle and we have a diagram so far. Uh-oh, my pages are sticking together. Tell me tree. Some trees are small, no more than a few inches tall. Others are big and still others are huge. Trees grow almost everywhere except where it's extremely cold or dry or in places of high elevations. So guys, high elevations means a high height or a very large height. Things like mountains, that's where trees sometimes have a harder time growing. And if you look here, we have another little diagram showing some types of trees and their sizes. Different kinds of trees. Trees need light, moisture, soil, and space to grow. Different trees grow in different environments. Some like cold weather. Others grow where it's warm year round. Some trees like wet places. Others grow in dry climates. So we have another of the subtitles, and then we have some diagrams here showing you, or excuse me, illustrations here showing you different types of trees. Tell me tree, seeds. There's another subtitle. All trees, even the biggest, begin their lives as seeds. These seeds come in different shapes and sizes. So notice we have lots of different types of seeds illustrated here and shown on this page. And then we have a nice diagram of how seeds sprout over here. A seed sprouts when a small root begins to grow. As the root absorbs water and minerals, a tiny stem with just two small leaves begins to grow above the soil. In time, the stem becomes hard enough to be called wood. Small branches begin to appear as buds that turn into tiny leaves. The hard woody stem is called a tree trunk. So we have another diagram, and I notice that we have some italic words here. So those are words that are of importance. Trunk is one, and wood is another one. And I notice that those are featured on our diagram. Pretty cool. We have another subtitle here, bark. A trunk is covered by a hard layer of wood called bark. Bark protects trees from weather and insects and animals that attack them. Different kinds of trees have different kinds of bark, hard or soft, thick or thin. So we have some more illustrations down here. I saw some italic words here with bark. Lots of text features in this story. Underneath the bark is a thin layer called the phloem. The phloem carries the food made by the leaves to the branches, trunk, and the roots of the tree. Next is the cambium layer. The cambium layer forms new growth for the trunk of a tree each year. The next layer, the sapwood, is made up of tiny tubes that carry water and minerals called sap. From the roots to the leaves, the center of the tree is called the heartwood, dead and solid sapwood that gives a tree its strength to sand, stand. Excuse me. So I notice we have another diagram here showing the inside of a tree, and then we have um, illustrations here that kind of show some parts of the tree as well. All right, we've got another subtitle, Roots. Roots grow from under the tree trunk down into the ground. Tiny root hairs at the tip of the roots take in water and minerals from the soil to help the tree grow. Roots anchor a tree in the ground and help hold it upright. Most trees have as many roots below the ground as they have branches above the ground. I thought that fact was really interesting. But you can actually see where the roots are in this illustration that Gail Gibbons drew. Leaves. The leaves of a tree make food for the tree to grow. The leaves pull up water from the roots and breathe in a gas from the air called carbon dioxide. Inside the leaves is a substance called chlorophyll. 
The chlorophyll in the leaves gathers energy from the sun. It mixes with water and the carbon dioxide to create food for the tree called sugar. This process is called photosynthesis. So I'm noticing lots of italics words on this page. Those are important words that we want to remember. And then there's even those italic words included in the diagrams and illustrations here. Trees use food from their leaves to grow new wood, branches, twigs, buds, leaves, seeds, nuts, and fruit. The fruit of trees is often sweet from the sugar the leaves make. The trees need their food to stay alive and renew their growth. When leaves make their food, they also make a gas called oxygen. The leaves release the oxygen into the air. People and animals need oxygen to breathe. Most of the oxygen in the air comes from trees. Although leaves come in many different shapes and sizes, there are only two different groups of trees, evergreen trees and broadleaf trees. Most evergreens have needles that are thin and scale-like because most evergreens keep their seeds inside cones. They are also called conifers. These trees lose their needles or leaves a few at a time throughout the year. So guys, these are like the pine trees that we have in Wilmington where you find the, um, you find the pine needles on the ground underneath them. You find pine cones underneath them as well. That's this type of tree. It's a conifer tree. Their leaves or their pine needles will stay green year round and they just lose a little bit at a time. The other type of tree we also have in Wilmington, and that is a broadleaf tree. And the broadleaf trees are something called deciduous trees, and that means that they lose their leaves every year for the autumn. Broadleaf trees have flatter, wider leaves. Many grow flowers and fruit and produce different kinds of seeds. Most broadleaf trees are deciduous. That means they lose their leaves in the autumn. Some leaves turn beautiful colors before they die and fall. In the spring, broadleaf trees grow new leaves. My pages are sticking together today. You can identify a tree by looking at the shapes of its leaves. Some leaves are smooth edged, some are rough edged, some are very big and broad, others are small and thin. I love how Gail Gibbons included pictures of these leaves with the trees, and she also shows the bark. Okay, they're great illustrations to help us better understand types of trees. <clears throat> there are a few pages of these, so I'll just let you guys look at these on your own. Okay, here's another one. I see a palm tree, we have some palm trees around here. We have a lot of these trees around here actually. Trees are used in many ways. They are harvested for their wood. Now when I hear the word harvested, I a lot of times think of crops and think of farmers, but harvested means that it's cut down and it's reaped or taken to use. And so when they harvest trees, they use that for their wood. They use it to build homes and to make furniture, crates, paper, pencils, thousands of things that we use every day. We eat the nuts and the fruit grown on trees too. Many animals and birds make their homes in trees. Millions of trees are cut down each year. It is important to harvest trees carefully and to plant new ones. Future growth is important because trees make oxygen for people and animals to breathe. Their roots hold soil together to keep it from eroding. That means to keep it from wearing away. Also, they, take, they make the world a beautiful place to live. So, What's neat about this book is it also includes a little activity that you can do to make a tree or leaf identification book. And then on the very last page, it includes facts about trees. Um, and that's a really neat resource to learn a little bit more about trees. 
So this book had some really great nonfiction text features. I hope you picked up on those as we were reading. There were lots of diagrams, lots of illustrations. There were subtitles on almost every page, bold and italic words, and lots of other features as we read. All right, the one thing I wanted to show you before I let you go is your Seesaw assignment for today. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and then show you what I've got. Okay, so for your Seesaw assignment today for reading, um, you're doing a nonfiction family interview. So for this activity, you are going to be choosing a family member to interview. It can be someone in your home or you can call someone or FaceTime someone. Use the recording button or the microphone to ask your family member the questions that are on this interview and then submit your work when you're done. Please type the inter um, the excuse me, your answers on the interview, unless you were recording it with your voice. That way I can know what's on the interview. All right, good luck guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you guys have a great afternoon. See ya.